Hi, I'm Dr. Wilcox. Today I'm here to talk to you about fibroids. It turns out that a lot of women going through fertility treatment will be diagnosed for the first time with benign tumors in the uterus. These are monoclonal tumors. They tend to start with a single cell and grow slowly over a long period of time. Most of these tumors are estrogen dependent tumors. So while you're premenopausal, the tumors will grow slowly. And then once you're postmenopausal, they often will stop growing or even shrink. They're solid tumors with poor blood flow. Uh, they can expand and reroute blood in the normal healthy tissue in the uterus. And in some cases can have adverse effects either getting pregnant or during the pregnancy. So when uh, we do an ultrasound and we're assessing the uterus, we're looking for pathology. Anything that could adversely affect blood flow could have an impact on implantation. And fibroids are one of the common findings. Uh, anywhere from one in four to one in two women uh, will have fibroids depending on your ethnic group. Certain groups have a higher propensity. We do believe that many of these tumors are genetically uh, predisposition, so you can get a genetic preload from your mother, for example. If she had fibroids, you're much more likely to have fibroids yourself. And as uh, time goes by, these tumors tend to get larger. We do sometimes recommend surgery for fibroids. They can do what's called a myomectomy, where we remove the tumors and spare the healthy tissue of the uterus. This allows women to reproduce uh, without having to use a surrogate. When we do see patients for a myomectomy, there are three criteria that are commonly recommended to consider doing surgery. The location of the tumor and the size are two important variables that will be considered. In fact, we name the tumor based on its location. If the tumor is in the uterine cavity, it's a submucous leiomyoma, and any tumor in the uterine cavity is considered significant regardless of size, so we generally will recommend removing it. If it's small enough, typically four or five centimeters or smaller, it can be removed hysteroscopically. So we can put a scope through the cervix and use a special device to remove the tumor. And in that case, you don't have much of a recovery. For large tumors in the myometrium, those are called intramural fibroids. Those tumors, if they're more than five centimeters, are considered clinically significant. So if you have a large fibroid in the muscle, muscular part of the uterus, we will recommend removing it. We believe that it will impact blood flow adequately to have a negative impact on the pregnancy. And then the final criteria is a little bit gray, a little bit uh, more subject to interpretation. If the tumor is smaller than five centimeters in the intramural space in the muscle, but distorting the uterine cavity, generally uh, we will decide if we think it's clinically significant. For me personally, if more than 50% of the uterine cavity appears to be impacted by the tumor, the tumor is juxtaposed to the lining, then I'll recommend myomectomy. Now, the last location, which is not considered clinically significant, is the outer part of the uterus, a subserous leiomyoma or subserous fibroid. Those are tumors that can get quite large uh, that don't have a direct impact on blood flow in the area where the baby implants and are not considered clinically significant. So if you are diagnosed with a fibroid, it gives you some idea what we're thinking about, and I hope this helps. Thank you.